occlusion, post variation, and viewpoint variation are the three major problems product managers, solution architects, and engineers encounter when building people or human deduction systems, be it use cases across surveillance, hospitality, ADAS, or in indoor or outdoor environments. These three problems are omnipresent. Hi, I'm Alphonse, and in today's edition of Unraveling Edge AI and Computer Vision for the Real World, I'll be discussing about how to manage occlusion, pose, and viewpoint variation in your human uh, deduction solutions. Well, to be clear, AI-based models work better when we use a localized and control the environment in training the model. But then, the major advantage of using AI is, is also its generalizability. The given AI solution must be trained in different environments with various data variations and should be deployable with a decent accuracy across major use cases. But the triple problems of occlusion, post variation and viewpoint variation will put a wrench in the accuracy of even the best planned out human deduction systems. So how to manage them? First, let's take viewpoint variation. Simply put, as the plane of view varies, the shape of the person will also change drastically. I look very different from my front uh, view to side view. This also changes object features and this causes the people deduction algorithm, which was trained uh, with the data set from a single view, fail in all other views as well. Now, uh, let me explain that with an example. If you train a sensor on a video surveillance view, it will look for multiple body parts such as head, arm, upper body, lower body, etc. to conclude if you are a human being. But this algorithm will fail if you place the camera overhead. This is because in this scenario, the sensor can only view the person's head and shoulders. And this, in a nutshell, is viewpoint variation. This can be managed by properly selecting anchor boxes. A deduction algo, instead of directly predicting the bounding box coordinates, predicts offsets from a determined uh, set of uh, boxes with a particular height weight ratio. These predetermined uh, set of boxes are our anchor boxes. These anchor boxes shapes and sizes are chosen to cover various scales and aspect ratio. So this way, you can actually manage viewpoint variation. The one more technique is the usage of multiple feature maps. So usually uh, in human deduction, uh, only the final convolution neural network layer is used for identification of the person. So in this scenario, only the larger size objects will be deducted. This is because the smallest size objects now tend to lose their uh, feature information during the down sampling that happens in the in-between pooling layers. But some uh, human deduction solutions like YOLO deduct uh, multiple network levels, meaning it preserves the uh, features in the earlier CNN networks uh, where the smaller object features will be present. This technique can be used to improve the deduction of smaller objects or objects of a different scale to a good extent. This uh, technique is also called uh, the feature pyramid network. I mean, if you want to search more about it in Google. Now, with this problem of viewpoint variation out of the way, let us look into pose variation. Now, most human beings uh, come in various poses, right? They will sit, stand, walk, bend over, stretch. Heck, they might be even doing one of those hardcore yoga poses. For an algorithm though, each of these poses have to be trained separately. Otherwise, the accuracy of your algorithms will be really bad. The only way to solve this problem is by including all the variation of poses into the data set. But here, we might get into another problem. If you put in too many images of people standing in a data set, the model will give more weightage to the standing scenarios. We need to make sure that we strike the right balance in, train, uh, in the training data set to avoid these accuracy problems later on. The third major problem is occlusion. And it's actually a pretty major problem in human deduction. Some major scenarios uh, for this are when two or more people are like really close or when an object occludes a person in the front or like when a chair partially occludes a person. In these scenarios, the object of interest seemingly merges. 
Because of this occlusion problem, the features extracted from them are not strong enough to say that they are objects. Because of this occlusion problem, detecting people in a crowding, it's in a crowded scenario actually becomes incredibly tricky. Truthfully, deduction of a completely clouded uh, object is impossible from a 2D image just from one camera view. One of the better methods for deducting partially occluded objects is to run in inferencing on a higher resolution image. In this way, you can get a higher spatial resolution feature map uh, at the output of the uh, convolutional neural network layer. As a result of this higher resolution feature map, uh, multiple people are found in uh, densely crowded regions, but this will reduce the throughput due to the computational overhead. Here, we have to go for a high performance hardware or you should uh, accept a low accuracy model. As a team of engineers, solution uh, architects and product managers identifying and solving various occlusion posts and viewpoint variation problems in a data set, I understand that it consumes a lot of time and energy where instead of building the business application logic, your team is focused on building the machine learning algorithm. You need to get the product out into the market fast, not be working on machine learning algorithms. At Visay Labs, we have built a series of tunable people reduction algorithms which can identify dwell time, congestion time, intrusion, people counting, tracking. And this has been pre-tested across various scenarios such as indoor, outdoor, as well as for various uh, uh, types of for user identification at close range to mass density identification concerts, malls, etc. So in addition of being deployable in various types of edge processors and embedded cameras. This set of algorithms has also been tested to solve all major occlusion viewpoint and post variation scenarios. Check out the link in the description to learn more about this AI Labs pre-built people reduction solution and how it can fasten your edge AI and computer vision product development. So, in summary, in this uh, short vlog, we've learned how to use anchor boxes and multiple feature maps to solve viewpoint variation problem and how building the right data set can help you solve the post variation problem and how getting in higher resolution images can help you solve the problem of occlusion. This is Alphonse signing off and looking forward to join you in yet another session of my vlog, Unraveling Edge AI and Computer Vision for the Real World. Ciao.